Outrocast. Aside from having to talk to people like me, is it an okay day for you so far? Yeah, it's fine. Good, thanks. I really appreciate you taking the time. Obviously, I'm a fan of the bands that you've been in, collaborated with, etc. But it's exciting to see the Iron Claw doing really well with your music in it. So how long did you have to keep it a secret that you were scoring this film? Because when it hit the trades that A24 was doing it, kind of all eyes were on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I tried to keep it a secret <laughs> um, at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sean asked me to do it while we were still working on The Nest, his previous film that I scored. Um because we were having a very good time working together, and uh, mm -hmm. and we're both really we're really loving what the what the collaboration was yielding. Um, and he was like, "Yeah, the next one is a bit of a curveball. It's about wrestling." <laughs> but uh, I was being a a teenage wrestling fan myself. I was like, "I'm in <laughs> right away." Well, that was actually going to be my next question about how much awareness. You had a, of that because if we're going to say Canadian teen wrestling, more likely it was the Hart family that drew you in, not the Von Ericks. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, good way to know your history. That is entirely true. I was I loved the Hart family as a, as a young teen, twelve year old, thirteen year old, um, and that was kind of my reference point, to be honest. But I think, I think that the Hearts had a, had a seemingly a less i'm sure it was fraught in its own way but a, a a less fraught relationship to their dad than the von erics and uh definitely less of a less of a brutally tragic family history there yeah when there's 11 12 kids there's bound to be a lot of tragedy it's just in the case of the von erics it was basically all of them except one without getting too spoilery but you yeah. know over to you sometimes when you're scoring a film you were there on the set, you see everything, you have all the footage. And then other times it's like, um, we need it in three weeks and uh, here's some of it. Which one were you for this? Had you seen all the footage and been around or was it a mm, just do what you do, Rich? Um, no, it, it was uh, thankfully thus far. I haven't I haven't been in one of the um, we've got three weeks. Can you pretty this up for us situations and and to be honest that kind of situation doesn't really appeal to me um, right and i'm i'm really you know lucky and and thankful that that uh both well th this one this is the earliest i've been involved to be honest because i knew way in advance of it even existing that i was going to be involved and so as soon as there was a script i i read it um way before they went into production and and the fact of of that, uh, and that I had a lot of time to mull in advance, like what might the approach be to this? And Sean was very hands off to start. Uh, he was very carte blanche about it. You know, do do what you want. But he he said, um, "I'm picturing big drums." And that was kind of that was it. It was kind of like that was the directive. And I was like, okay. And um, and he also gave me the the playlist of of songs that he'd been listening to while he was writing it. It's all these like really great seventies kind of working man songs and kind of, I can yeah. do it. I know, I know I've, I can do it kind of songs. Stranglehold by Ted Nugent has made a comeback, you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, so with that, you know, that very minimal amount of information, I kind of, I started mulling and I also like, before they started shooting, I started just like knocking around ideas just in, in the dark, knowing what the, you know, knowing what the 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 basic arc of the film was going to be, even though these things change from from the script stage to the to final edit stage quite a lot. Um, and the idea occurred to me that it could be a cool approach that, that there's some kind of music happening that's like, you know, related to you know, Sean listening to all these songs, I was like, maybe there's something, maybe there's something internal to one of the characters that's like, he's kind of got a song in his head and he's singing to himself. Maybe we, maybe we, you know, approach part of the music from that angle, like where there's some kind of ongoing musical monologue of sorts, not of a literal sort necessarily, but something. And, uh, and then at a certain point, this, this song that um, me and Laurel, uh, Little, Little Scream, wrote just just happened as as it does when you 
spend enough time playing music with someone this this kind of song idea came out and i thought i really think this might work for the film and i said to sean i think i've got a song that might be a thing um although he you know he hadn't asked for a song at this point but but it was funny like i think i think in his mind at that point the song like he knew that he wanted to have uh, Mike, the younger brother, playing some sort of song in the film, but he hadn't actually asked me for that. I think he thought maybe it would be something else. It'd be a cover. It would be like whatever. I don't I don't know if he had articulated that to himself, but as soon as he heard this, and again, this is well in advance of, of the production of the film, mm-hmm. he was he was like, oh, my God, this is it. Like, this is this is a gift. We got to we got to build this into the film. We got to have them play this. This has got to be what you know, this has got to be in, in part of Mike's life, this this song. Mm. um which was really which was really cool and so i was kind of like then working on score ideas simultaneously to getting the song together and then like teaching you know i ended up having to teach mike um and the other guys that that played it with him the lovers band um how to play the song because it was me playing all the instruments um and that was great that that like to me that level of depth of involvement in the kind of dna of, of the film or of the of the upbringing of the film, really, if not the DNA, um, is really like that's the, that's the dream to be kind of worked in with the fabric of creating the thing, not just you right. know, building build helping build the the foundation of the house, not just wallpapering it right at the very end. Um, that's definitely my preferred way to work is to be more inside of the thing and and really like if the music can inform the production in some kind of way that's that's amazing because it just elevates and kind of interweaves the two things that much more i think so it sounds like a good mix of you getting to be you and direction in other words you weren't given too little direction it seems like the right amount and all that and if shifting in another direction here you know you're not the only arcade fire member who's found success in scoring uh colin has done some stuff i believe sarah's done some stuff is it a coincidence that members of the group and collaborators of the group have become part of the film world? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, for me, it was always, it was always a goal. Um, Mm -hmm. Like from a, from like a kind of a teenage, teenage period of my life. I, some part of me was like, Oh, I'd love to score movies and just didn't know how to get there. And, and, um, and, you know, my, my road to, my road here has been kind of roundabout and different from a lot of film composers who that's, that's what they do. That's the only thing they do. Um, and I think same, same for Colin. Um, and, uh, but, but like, I mean, interestingly, me and Sarah, when, when we were, when we started Bell Orchestra, um, we were both in university and I think both of us assumed that because of the nature of that music that like, that people would come knocking for us to do film scores and weirdly nobody ever did. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was also, you know, it was a very part-time ensemble. Um, mm-hmm. But, but I think I always assumed we were, we were scoring like um, dance contemporary dance performances together and, and we were doing kind of live, live soundtracks to films um, that as, as part of our kind of early days in Montreal musician, musician life. And, and university life and so I just kind of assumed that somehow the film composition thing would work itself out and uh, amazingly it, it has <laughs> without me yeah. taking a you know a straight track to it um and it was it was actually it was actually Sean Sean really loved a record that I put out called Music for Heart and Breath and he he wrote uh he got in touch with me saying he'd written the, the Nest the film he was then working on entirely listening to that that record on loop ah. and would i would i possibly think about scoring it um and that was before arcade fire had had done the her soundtrack uh as well so that was really that was kind of the first thing for any of us i think maybe all oh, maybe colin had, had no i don't I think colin's first real film work was like 2017 maybe i'm not sure anyway um all that to say it, it really arrived at my doorstep kind of organically um for like through through the kind of music for music's sake not through trying to specifically be a film composer just more like through making music which to me is is the dream um and that's always how i try and relate to these things as well it's like try to you're making a film score you're trying to serve the film but before that 
before that you're actually trying to make music for music's sake and um i'm trying to just work with with directors who can really get behind that get in, get into that because i think you know you can kind of tell with a lot of with a lot of film music you can kind of tell it's just some some film music makes it makes a great album and some film music is only good as the as the soundtrack to the film while you're watching the film and i would much much rather aim for the first rather than the latter good call so it sounds like this you can want something and the more you chase it the less you get it then you stop chasing it and then you got it and here you are and we're sometimes <laughs> yeah when we're, about, when we're lucky when we're lucky <laughs> We're talking about your work on a very acclaimed thing. And, you know, two questions and then I let you go. The first one is often when you have a successful project, people go, oh, he did that. OK, let's have him do that again. So in the case of, say, the movie The Wrestler, when that was a big hit and it revitalized Mickey Rourke, a lot of the studios start going, oh, OK, so there can be more wrestling things. And now that the Iron Claw is successful, now people are saying, OK, there's a Hulk Hogan movie at Netflix and we can look into this biopic and that biopic. Has anything wrestling related come to you since as a result of working on the Iron Claw? <laughs> not to my knowledge. Not not yet. Not yet. Um, but early days, I suppose. But I mean, ironically, it's like it's like most of the score i would say the bulk of the score isn't really scoring wrestling itself it's really much more it, it you know inter interlaced with the kind of emotions the deeper emotions of the story sure. the kind of tragic story and so it's it's not like i did this you know this like fantasia for wrestlers or anything like that where people are yeah, like you wow this guy really uh, knows how to score wrestling <laughs> like there's so really, you know there's some there's there's action scenes but it, that was not the the focus of the thrust of the score yeah to rudely interrupt you here it's not like they went hey right eye of the tiger you know sideways 12 times that wasn't the score you gave an actual craft musicians kind of score but sometimes when people have parentheses this project people go oh okay he could do that so let's let's now have him do a bunch of entrance themes to wrestlers but one day we'll see if that happens and uh, sure sure <laughs> the, yeah. the last question i have for you is you know this is a big project but knowing what we know film takes forever to come out books take forever to come out etc so are we allowed to know what's next from you whether it's scoring yeah. side man oh please tell uh, I mean, I, actually, I, amazingly, like I just did this this year of like intense amounts of for me film scoring, where um, I actually uh, the film that I finished scoring a few months ago just got announced that um, that it's uh, premiering at South by Southwest, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's a really really cool kind of it's a documentary with with. Um, stage parts it's not a traditional documentary at all it's kind of an experimental fantastical documentary called adrienne in the castle hmm. um directed uh actually directed by my wife who is who is uh, laurel springlemeyer who is little scream uh well, not directed by her sorry written written by her co-written by her and directed by a woman named shannon walsh um that's a really cool special unique piece of work um so that's the next thing that'll probably appear from me um and beyond that's that's the that was the end of my extremely busy year of scoring because i did before the iron claw i did um eileen the the william oldroyd film um with the dan hathaway's in that's also a really amazing film it's flown a little bit more under the radar than uh than the iron claw <laughs> but but um yeah so that's the next thing there's also there's also non-film music things happening. There's a, a record um, that I made. There's actually a, like a string trio record that I did uh, with Sarah Neufeld from Arcade Fire and a dear friend of ours, Rebecca Foon, um, that's coming out uh, sometime this year. Also, just the three of us. Um, and a record, a duo record that I made with my dear friend, Dallas Good, um, who sadly was in a band yes. called the Sa Sadies, but he passed um, <clears throat> just about two years ago now. Um, so I finished that uh, a little while ago and that'll be coming out as well. So those are the next things in terms of public public offerings um, and what's next for me scoring wise. I'm not sure. I'm in discussion with a couple of different projects that I might or might not get involved with. And uh, 
as you say, these things are are slow moving. Yeah. So it sounds like there's a lot coming from you. We don't know <laughs> when it's coming, but we just have to follow you on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. And that's how we'll know what's coming out when it's coming out. Yeah. I mean, that's, that seems to be how the, how the whole thing works these days anyway. So. Exactly. But, uh, you know, ending on a compliment here. Thank you for the many years of great art. Looking forward to what's to come. And hopefully uh, you're sweeping some awards uh, very, very soon. Fingers crossed for that. We'll, we'll see what happens. But thank you. Yeah. Outro.